we've always viewed ourselves as about a year behind the Blue Jays <laughs> as a, because roughly that's about when we started. And, you know, we have uh, similarly when the Blue Jays started their rebuild, they did it with some premium prospects in the minor leagues, guys like Vlad and Bo Bichette and, and Kevin Biggio, et cetera. Uh, and they still have a couple that that are on the way. Guys like guys like Martin and Pearson, and there's there's they've done a really nice job of building up those layers, and we feel like that's happening for us too. Now, understand the 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 basic premise of a rebuilding project like the, the Toronto is in, and the Mariners are a, a year behind in. It's about concentrating your resources into windows of opportunity, right? It's about saying that, hey, when you take a step back, we're not going to use as many resources for players that are competitive at the major league level right now because we're going to try to get more that are clumped together at a different part of the process. Part of it that goes along once you get that and you get Kelnick and Cal Raleigh and some draft picks that and younger prospects that you've acquired in trades and you kind of get that, that nucleus of young talent you then add to that and use the resources that in some cases you haven't spent in previous years. Their payroll has come down. I am totally okay with that as long as that money gets spent when it matters. Instead of spending money that takes you from a 75-win team to an 81-win team, spend the money that takes you from an 85-win team to a 91-win team, from a 91-win team to a 97-win team. That's the, that's the idea of it that he's talking about, and I was encouraged to hear that, that if they're a year behind the Blue Jays, all right, we, we can expect some significant additions and some payroll ads this offseason. I want that to be an honest assessment. I don't know that that's an honest assessment. And I say that because if you take a look at some of the young players that the Blue Jays have, those guys are getting close to having a thousand at bats in their career where we're still waiting for Jared Kelnick to come back and even have a chance to get to that. And honestly, that's probably something getting at least to that point. That's a full season away. So I don't know if it's one, I feel like it might be more a year and a half, two years behind Toronto, but they're four games above 500 right now. And they've got about the same record as the blue Jays. I, I agree with you. The, the blue Jays top shelf prospects, like the guys that this was are the second generation dudes. It's Guerrero, it's Bichette, and it's Biggio. And out of those three guys, Biggio hasn't really he hasn't really hit yet. But certainly Guerrero and Bichette have. Right. Kelnick and Rodriguez, and maybe Logan Gilbert, maybe and Emerson Hancock a little bit below. I I think those are some of the. We'll see if George Kirby works his way into that. So I agree with you that they're a little bit, but they're four games above 500 right now, and those aren't the extent or the exclusively some other young players that they've liked and guys like Jake Fraley. Like, if they're if they're, you could talk yourself into being that this is a really positive sign that you might even add at the at the trade deadline this year, given how things are going. Given that you have a very difficult difficult challenge in front of you to even make the playoffs though you do need to be careful the rest of the way and i've been back and forth on this there's a part of me that would like to see them perhaps take a swing at somebody around the trade deadline maybe they could extend that person in the offseason the smart approach is probably to wait until free agency and hope that somebody will be there um when we really i think hunkered down with jerry we asked him hey if you're a year away, we just saw what the Blue Jays did this past offseason. Mm -hmm. I mean, they spent $150 million, six years, George Springer. One year, $18 million for Marcus Simeon. So this coming off season, is this the moment? Is this where all of a sudden we're looking at the Mariners as an actual player at the poker table in the winter meetings look, making moves to potentially sign free agents? Absolutely, in a word. The only way you can do this is by first identifying where it's best to spend that, that money and how you can go out and fill the void. Until you go through the, the, the laying of the foundation, you don't really know who is going to take the extra year, who is going to stumble and fall, where do you need to fill in. And like this iteration of the Blue Jays, and like I talked about with teams like the, the Braves and Mets from years gone by, those teams always went out and added the piece, whether it be, you know, Gary Carter and Keith Hernandez for the Mets or Terry Pendleton and Greg Maddox for the Braves. 
when it's time and you know where you're adding, that's when you go fire your bullets. And, and we feel like that's coming for us this off season, and we're very excited for it. Where do you think the bullets are? Where do you think they need to add? Somebody. Bullpen, right? Well, like you, you, you're gonna, you're gonna need an, you're gonna need a power yeah. armor too in that bullpen. Yeah, yeah man. Rafael but... Montero's still pitching innings, so I don't want to hear any ah. Like until well, Rafael Montero's not trotting out there anymore. That's almost like you need more in the an bullpen. Argument. You could just bring Rafael Montero. It's a good argument, though. Uh, I, 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 I agree with you there. But the, the tricky thing with bullpen arms is you know how volatile that position is. So I'd be pretty hesitant there. I, I definitely want to do better than, than Rafael Montero or Ken Giles when he comes back from Tommy John's surgery. Third base, second base. Those are two other spots. Yeah, and uh, I think with first base right now, look, I, I, I saw somebody trying to make the argument on uh, Mariner's Reddit, which I can still see, <laughs> that Evan White's going to be back and he's going to be fine. Ty France is your first baseman right now. J.B. Crawford's your shortstop. You're right. It's second base and third base, but I always think that you should be looking at outfielders and thinking long and hard about any option that's available for you because that's a position where, first off, I mean, just look where the Mariners are right now. You can never have enough depth. Yeah, you've, you've got two infielders playing outfield right now in Shedlong and, and Jake Bowers. Yep. That's, that's not ideal in left field. you also got an injury, and, and we know that Kelnick's going to be back up here before too long. Right, so... You know that it's not the worst shape, but you can always use some depth. So, yeah, I, I think that's what you look at. I think the good thing is, starting pitching, do you have to be that aggressive this offseason with what you got this past year? You need another frontline starter. I'm with you there. You need, and you needed to tell me where that's coming from because you want someone else at the front of, of that. That's probably why I'm so interested in Herman Marquez. If they don't have to trade for Herman Marquez... Which is not they do because he's got three years left on his right. contract. He's not he's not going to be a free agent. You're going to have to and you're going to have to give up a lot to get him because I think he's going to be fairly coveted. The big thing is if you decide to trade for Herman Marquez, you are going to have to. Exp you, you're saying yeah, it's next year where it's going to happen, as opposed to saying it's next year where we're going to be aggressive. And I don't think that that's necessarily the way that they should go. I I don't think they can make any guarantees about that because what they're doing right now it's great. But I do not know that this is necessarily sustainable because of the because they just happen to be winning these series in very scrappy manner. I I, I wish I had a better feel for how it's happening, you know, because that would make you more likely to want to wait till the off season to add than to add something here and trade for it during the season. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know, maybe maybe next trade deadline is when you think about Herman Marquez. You know, I mean, he'd still be under contract. Maybe it's slightly he's less expensive. This year. You do? I, I, th I think he's moving this year. I mean, given everything that the Rockies have done, that the, the Rockies have kind of, I mean, when they traded Arenado and it doesn't look like they're going to extend story, we, we could see the fire sale come from them.